Is this thing on? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Summits Podcast. We appreciate you guys tuning in from wherever you get your podcasts or on the Heroes Foundation YouTube channel. And for you YouTubers, if you're watching there and you haven't subscribed, please do so. We would greatly appreciate that. And hit that little notification bell while you're doing it. That way you'll be alerted to when new episodes drop. All right. It's May in Indy. You know what that means. It's a great month of May with the Indy 500 on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we are filming this episode just prior to that, um, though we're looking at a release of May 31st. So happy May for all you indie folks. Hope you guys had a good one. Um, we are joined today by our guest, Miss Amy Kirsch. Amy, welcome to the Summits Podcast. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to our guest? Tell us a little bit about, about your background and that sort of thing. Um, well, I grew up here in Indy. My well, not my whole life. Yeah, yep. I grew up here. Um, I went to North Central and went to IU, and um, from there, I had always wanted to live in Chicago. So from IU, I moved to Chicago for about. Five or six years. Okay. What'd you graduate? What degree did you graduate with from IU? A liberal arts. Okay. Yeah. And then what'd you do in Chicago? Um, I worked a lot in retail and fashion, and then okay. I worked for a clothing manufacturer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Believe it or not, there's a clothing manufacturer in downtown Chicago. Yeah. That's, that's been there for like 90 years. Oh, okay. Oh, really? So yeah. Yeah. So I worked. So you lived um, downtown then. I lived right. downtown, and um, yeah, I worked in marketing for this manufacturer. Okay. How was that shift going from you know North Central area to oh, living I loved it. Like downtown? I yeah. loved it. Yeah. I was having the time of my life. Yeah, loved it. Yeah. I always wanted to live in Chicago, <laughs> but uh, nothing ever really took me there. And now I, I don't think I could do it. Well, I think, yeah. and you probably have just as many friends as I do that, and, and I would assume pretty the same way, but. <clears throat> If you're going to do that, and granted, I'm biased, but right after college is a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I know, you know we all know some yeah. people who did and stayed, and, and maybe they're still in the Chicago area, but as they uh, got married, had families, I would say the bulk probably still don't live downtown. Maybe, maybe yeah. there's a few, but yeah. most kind of moved out to the burbs at that right. point in time. And, right. And after college, I think especially IU, a lot of people go to Chicago. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was just having a great time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after four <laughs> years in Chicago, then you decided to, to move back home? Or uh, move back to no, anyway? not exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's where kind of the cancer, my cancer story comes in. Okay. Um, so I had been there probably about five years, and um, I was 28, and... Uh, I'm trying to think. I was 28, and I had gotten a mole removed on my leg. Okay. And I was told that it was okay. And um, I'm trying to think. It was probably about nine months later, um, this bump appeared in my groin. And I really didn't think anything of it because it was just like a little bump that you kind of sometimes get like when you're shaving your bikini line. <laughs> mm, okay. And um, I you went. You know about that. Right. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you yeah. should know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you too. Oh. <laughs> um, so I went to the doctor and he kind of dismissed me kind of like, yeah, it's nothing. Okay. Maybe you just like nicked yourself. Um, so then it kind of got a little bigger and I was a little concerned mm -hmm. and I'm, I, th I think I went back at that point and he still kind of dismissed me kind of like, I think you're a little crazy <laughs> overreacting a little bit. Uh -huh. and yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, I, at that point I kind of felt like something was wrong. Right. I really did. Is that a feeling kind of? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your gut feeling. You kind of mm -hmm. know something's wrong, but whatever. At 28 or 29, you're, you're still pretty much in communication with your parents all the time. And, had you talked to them at all about it? I did. I did. Yes. Okay. And I actually, I remember coming home one visit and um, I, I remember telling my dad, he's like, oh, you should go get that checked out. 
Yeah. And so I went back to Chicago, called my doctor, and at that point, there was another one next to it. Hmm. And it yeah. had gotten bigger, the first one. So I went back to him, and he was like, okay, well, at this point, we need to get it biopsied. We just need to get it out and see what it is. But I'm sure it's nothing. Mm-hmm. And so he— well, What was the timeline between that? So before, or for, Bump first showed up to him actually saying that you would, do you, you remember? It's, it probably could have been maybe like four or six weeks. Okay. 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 And so then he put me off for the surgery for three weeks. Okay. And so. So you're like two and a half months. Yeah. Kind oh, of yeah. Out yeah. From yeah. When and you I would, first noticed yep. it. Yeah. So I definitely remember the day. It was December 29th, 1999. I went in for the biopsy at Northwestern. And um, immediately, like they said, oh, we'll call you, like, I think it was the next you know, morning or the next mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And that night, they called me. Oh, okay. <laughs> when very I got quick. home, very yeah. quick. And they had told me it was melanoma. Okay. And I was, I mean, of course, when you hear cancer, and I was like, I was shocked. Right. And um, I called my parents, and obviously they were shocked and upset. And um, they came up to Chicago, and my doctor, who kept dismissing me, he was the one that called. And he's like, well, we all need to have a powwow <laughs> with the dermatologist who was in his office who took it off hmm. and him and everyone. And we need to figure out the primary and figure out where it's coming from. Yeah. So we did that the next day. Okay. And um, what they did was they sent back the slide from the mole that was on my leg because it was the same leg. They sent it to, um, they sent it somewhere for another second opinion. Sure. And it came back slow-growing melanoma. Okay. Okay. So what was your thought when your current doctor that had kind of brushed you off a couple times oh, said God. that? Oh, God. At that point, I think I was just in shock. I yeah, don't even know. Okay. I can't yeah. even remember. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was, you know, it was 22 years ago. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was in surgery like 10 days later for a whole groin dissection um, taking out all my lymph nodes on the right side of my leg. And then I was, um, recovering from that and, um, you know, seeing an oncologist and, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. What was, what, when the diagnosis was given, um, what was the course of treatment at that point? So, okay. So the course of treatment at that point with stage three melanoma um, 22 years ago, uh, basically there was only one, <laughs> Okay. um, it was interferon. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, remove it and do nothing or interferon. Okay. Like you do nothing or you can do interferon and that can like boost your chances of it maybe not coming back like 50, mm-hmm. 50, mm-hmm. um, and so I basically, you know, I was like, well, I need to do something. Right. I can't yeah. not not do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I did my year of, I say, hell, yeah. and I yeah. did a year of interferon, which yeah. is like, you know, the nastiest drug. Um, and it was a year of hell, um, the hardest year of my life. I, I mean, to this day, it was the year, the hardest year of my life. Were you wow. still working at the time? Um, I, <coughs> at that point, well, I was working and then trying to think, no, I stopped working. Um, and my, oh my God, my the company I was working for was so nice because they let me stay on because I needed health insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They were so nice. Um, And so I stayed on for a while. 
um, I stayed in Chicago for about six months. Okay. And eventually it made no sense for me to like stay in Chicago yeah. because it was so difficult. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're familiar with interferon. I mean, I know of it, but not real super familiar. So no. You can't move. I mean, okay. you basically, um, it's, you go, you go in every day and do it intravenously okay. every day for a month. And then you give yourself a shot every other day. And um, you basically sleep for like 16 hours a day. <laughs> and so it made no sense for me to live there. Yeah. So that's when I decided to move back to Indy. Okay. Yeah. Is, is interferon still used today? I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not too familiar No, with that, not so. for that. It's basically okay. used for hepatitis okay. C. Okay. I And I think it's still used for that. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I miss that day of med school. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and all their subsequent and previous days. Yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To include admission in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So you're so, back and you're, you're living at home, finishing so, up treatment. Um, and, and you said that was about a year. Yeah. So it was yeah. a, yeah, you do a whole year and, um, finished that. I don't know how, but I did. And then I was, yeah, I was living, um, in India. I was living here and, um, then, met my husband. It was a miracle. I had two kids. I don't even know how after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They talk about that before treatment at all. They did. And okay. they really said, you know, there's not enough data, but we think you should be okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, yeah, I didn't have a problem. Yeah. Um, how old are your kids now? They're 16 and 15. Okay. Um, and so then, let's see. So when they were two and three, we moved to Memphis. Okay. <laughs> Memphis, uh, home don't ask UPS, why. right? Uh, FedEx. Yeah. FedEx. Yep. FedEx, that's right. FedEx. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we moved to Memphis from 2008 to 2014. Okay, yeah. so we were there for about six years. Mm -hmm. And I was doing very well, doing great. I had a... Let's see, 13 years of, like, you know, cancer-free. Mm -hmm. I was doing my checkups and everything. Yep. Um, and then I'm trying to think. I had a little incident where um, I had some chest pain. And I really, I thought it was my heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought it was my heart. Yeah. And I called my friend who is a cardiologist and he told me to go to the ER. And so I went to the ER, checked in, got the whole works. Yeah. They said, your heart is fine. Yeah. I was there forever. He called over there and he's like, she's not leaving. You were not letting her leave. <laughs> and they didn't like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me out. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, she's not leaving. I know her history and something is not right. Mm. So he came over and he had me do a CT of mm. my chest. He had me do an X-ray. And... If it weren't for him, I mean, he saved my life mm -hmm. because they found a little tiny spot in my lung. And um, to this day, I, I just, I, I'm so thankful for him. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. Thank goodness for his uh, persistence. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 So what then progressed at that point? Did want, I assume they wanted to biopsy that spot for sure. So they uh, biopsied that. They tried to, first of all, and okay. they couldn't. So then I had um, a date with a surgeon who did it with um, that Da Vinci right. robot. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when he was in there, uh, he did notice that it was something... And he took part of my lung out 
where the thing was and okay. some lymph nodes and it came back it was melanoma um so it it was stage four okay. and um it was stage four because of the metastases from the first time around or is that that's what they felt uh no because it went to an organ to an organ okay yeah oh, okay. so once it yeah. moves to an organ then it becomes stage four when it's in your lymph nodes it's stage three okay um, so that's what it was uh, back in 2000. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. And so um, from there, I went and saw a specialist at Vanderbilt okay. in no. Nashville. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. And um, uh, had like the PET scan and all of that. And um, then found out that it was also in my brain. And. Um, a few other places like my shin and some other places and um, had to do like some radiation Mm -hmm. on the brain um, and had to decide uh, what treatment I was going to start with because there's like a protocol with melanoma as to like what what drugs you start with okay it was at least back then um, in 2013 like there's uh, you start with one, and then if that fails, then you go to the next one. Okay. And then you go to the next one. Like a checklist? Yes. You basically check yes. them off and yes. move down the list. And, right. Yeah. 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 So at first I started with um, an immunotherapy called Yervoy. Yep. Okay. And so back then they weren't combining Yervoy with... Um, like Keytruda mm-hmm. or Neva, like, right. So like today they combine them now. Right, they yeah. do combos. So back then they weren't. Okay. And so I just did your boy and that failed. And then I did Taff and Lar, which is okay. a targeted therapy. And then after that, like after six months that failed. And then I did Keytruda and then that failed. <laughs> Cause they were all just single like agents. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so by that time it was like 2015 and, um, they were combining agents and I decided to do, I decided to go to MD Anderson and I did Tafenlar and Mechanist where they were combining, um, an inhibitor, which is the Mechanist. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I've been on for six years. Okay. And that I'm still taking it. Um, I take it, you know, twice a day and that's been kind of like my magic pill. Okay. Is yeah. that, is it taken via like, how, how do you consume? Is it a pill or is it? Pills. Okay. Yeah. I right. take them twice a day and there, um, there've been a couple times, like three years in, I had to reduce the dose because of toxicity and, mm. um, quality of life. Okay. Um, and then about nine months ago, I reduced it again, okay. as low as I could get it, yeah. without stopping. My doctor wouldn't let me stop. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I've been doing really well. Yeah. Like, so, with, where are you today? What is uh, like scans um, and things like that? How do things look? I my scans look really well. They consider me Ned, like no evidence of disease. Okay. Um, and that's been. Like six, almost six years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so I go every six every six months now. Um, it was every three for a really really long time, um, and I got to six months about two years ago. Um, so I go, I go to Houston every six months um, for my body, mm-hmm. PET scans and CTs, oh. um, and then I go to Vanderbilt for my brain MRIs every three months still. Okay. I have to do that. Yeah. So yeah. what's the, um, so obviously, you know, the, that combination has worked for you. What is, is that common with that combination? No. Okay. I'm right. so so glad. No, that's so a very good question. It's so not common. Okay. No. And, um, no, when they, when I started it, they had told me that, you know, we're going to start this and there's a really good chance that, you know, it might fail in a year and a half. A lot of times it does. It could be a year, year and a half. 
And I was expecting that. And, you know, I was living my life. Um, kind of time. Yeah, kind of scared. Yeah. Yeah, you live it in yeah. three, th- kind of three-month increments for a long, mm-hmm. long time. Well, is this going to be the time where the shoe drops? Or is right. this going to, mm-hmm. like, really, you do. Um, and for, a, I'd say, a couple of years, like, I I kind of didn't want to plan anything. I didn't want to plan vacations, family yeah. trip. I didn't want to do, like, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, well. That's where the mental aspect of cancer plays a role that, um, unless you've been through it, it's hard for people to kind of comprehend. But, I mean. Um, I mean, you can. I mean, you can imagine it right now. I've, it, t- oh, you telling yeah. the story, yeah. and 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 for someone who hasn't been through the experience, to think about, wow. So for literally every three months, you're getting put through this agony of, holy crap, <laughs> it could be back. Yeah. I mean, is this yeah. going to be the time that you know we have the we have to hear those words again? Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's the the, I don't want to say mind fuck, but that's kind of what it is, and it's yeah. it's real. It yeah. Oh, it's real. Yeah. 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 I can't imagine the the roller coaster of like. <laughs> emotions and worry and things like that that like week leading up before you're it's like life's great life's great and then you get closer you get to it it kind of you think more and more about it get your scan negative okay and then it's a quick uptick yes. again right yeah. it's just over and over and over and you ride that they cycle call it scans yeah. scans anxiety yeah that's what they call it yeah 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 that's what they call it um but yeah and so and that was also a big reason why um, when I went to MD Anderson, I wanted to go there because if and when it failed, I wanted to be somewhere where there were options. Mm -hmm. And um, now being six years later, there are so many options. That was my my next question when you said that. So, you know, a a good manager of a business we talk about all the time is when you're you're looking to do something, you always think about, okay, what's worst case scenario? Can, can I handle that? Can I deal with that to help mm-hmm. just determine, do we want to take that risk or do that, do that next step? So I've got to assume then that you guys have already looked at, it's so okay. If at some point in time, this current combination stops working, we already know that there's, are there options, number one, and two, what, what those options may be. Of course, as, as things continue to evolve and advance, you know, hopefully there's, there's more options and better options. But I, that's something you guys have already looked at, and, and you know at this point that there are other options should you ever have to go down that path. Mm-hmm. There are so many options now. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when yeah. I started this, there, were, there was another option. And then I would say like two years ago, there was even another option. Mm-hmm. And now, like today, I just see like so many more being approved. Mm-hmm. And so I feel more confident yeah. that um, if and when it fails, um, I be think another door you I'll, can open. Yes, kinda, I do. Yeah. And um, hopefully, it'll, I feel like, hopefully, maybe it will just be like a chronic disease that I can control. I'm praying. Right. And um, I think, uh, like I have always thought from the day that I was diagnosed, you have to have a good attitude. Mm-hmm. And you have to, you know, be positive. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about attitude a lot. Uh, you yeah. said you've watched some of the past episodes, and you've probably seen where we talk about attitude. Mm-hmm. There's no question that it plays a role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, not just within yourself, within the you know the six inches between your yeah. ears, but the uh, that ne- that support system, that network that you've got of friends and family helping you through it as well. Um, when when was when was the last time you were in Houston? I was there three months ago. Okay, so another three months will go by. You'll go back down. Um, I guess what amazes me is when you say that there's now not just one option, but potentially multiple options. Mm-hmm. And it's only been, I won't say only, but let's say six years. Is that something right? That's pretty remarkable that there's yeah. been enough, that much advancement in just six years. And I think that's a testament to um, all the people out there putting in the work on the research side, the dollars that it requires, but also the work of the, the researchers um, and, and the advancements that are being made. I mean, we're certainly a long way to go, but it's 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 great to see that, that um, those advancements are being made nonetheless. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's also, I mean, a testament to the people that are doing the trials. Yeah. Right. 
I yeah. mean, we have to thank them too. One hundred percent. I'm glad you said that. So, uh, Janet Baker was an employee of the Heroes Foundation. Um, unfortunately, she passed away um, last year, and she was doing uh, some some clinical trials at Vanderbilt. And mm -hmm. I, I remember having a conversation with her where she talked about she's like, you know, the odds are not in my favor with this trial. But you know, if, if they learn anything from me that could then ultimately save someone down the road, then, then it's, that's, that's why we're doing this, aside from you know, the hope that maybe it, yeah. I am yeah. one of the lucky ones that, that it works for. So um, I don't know if anything that Gina did has, has any repercussions with this particular scenario, but uh, perhaps it will with, with others and with the type of cancer that she had. So um, yeah, thank you to all the people you know, in the past who were part of clinical trials that, that um, now folks like yourself can read the benefits of. And so we thank those folks. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Yes. So what, uh, what, what does the future look like? I mean, what, I assume you have a different outlook on life now, certainly. Oh, of course I do. I mean, I treasure every single day and moment and, um, I don't sweat the small stuff <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, How do you handle that with two teenagers in the middle of high school? <laughs> <laughs> I say that from experience. Oh my gosh. Oh, she might not sweat the small stuff, it's but hard. They, they do. Yeah. It, it is hard. I have to tell you, but, um, I try and not let myself get worked up. Yeah. I mean, I really do. It's hard. I say that. And it, I have to be reminded by my wife. Like, remember, remember when you said don't sweat, sweat the small stuff? I'm like, oh yeah, thanks. Yeah. I mean, I have to take a deep breath sometimes when I try. I sometimes want to like yell. Or I'm like, oh no, that's not good for my health. <laughs> I'm like, oh, calm down. I'm like, calm down, because it's it's not healthy. You just, you know what? It isn't. Yeah. 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 It's not worth it. Yep. Yeah. It really. Um, I don't know. I just try and have a good attitude about things and yeah, just enjoy life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you were talking to either your 28 year old self or 28 year old John or Jane Doe today that, that suddenly found themselves in the similar situation that you had um, early on, what, what might you say to them today? Oh, um, well, I would say, well, I would tell them, I remember what my dad told me, and I would probably tell them the same thing. Um, you know, you definitely are entitled to be upset. Uh, you can cry, you can get it out, be angry, you know, mm -hmm. this and that. For I remember him telling me, you can cry, be angry, get mad for 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not going to change it. Right. <laughs> um, and attitude is 95% of this. So you have to have a great attitude. And, um, you know, you just have to fight it. Hmm. It's not going to change it. Um, these were the cards that you were dealt. Mm -hmm. And um, you just have to be strong. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I remember him telling me that because I was going through like all, you know, the emotions, getting very upset. I remember running out of my apartment and then he told me that and I was like, you're right. And there are a lot of people that have it worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 Well, well said, dad. Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. He dad's always has words. great advice for me and he, Yes. He always has. He always does. Still. So what? Um, let's see. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. 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 And you're he, just trying to think of all the good advice you had for your kids, right? And you're like recollecting it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I still with that. ask yeah. him for advice for my kids. I'm like, so what do you think? <laughs> oh. That's good because sometimes I wonder. Well. Sometimes when I see my dad around my kids, like I, I, I wonder, like, does he remember that he, he had kids himself? <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. 
Um, anything else that you'd like to share with the audience today? Um, well, it is uh, May. Melanoma. That's right. Aware. Melanoma Cancer Awareness, cancer awareness Month. Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just um, protect yourself, protect your kids. You know, it's never too early to teach your kids how to apply sunscreen. Um, yeah. Apply it liberally. Yeah. Often. And liberally. Often. And yeah. yeah reapply it. On the oh, head. yeah. Right there. Totally fine. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Burning your head is not fun. I can no. attest. No. Yeah, that's right. So, guys, again, um, as Amy mentioned, May is Melanoma and Skin Cancer Awareness Month. So, uh, put on the sunscreen. We're mm -hmm. rolling into the summer months here in the Midwest uh, and, and most parts of the other or the rest of the country. Uh, so, lather up with the SPF. Um, we've got little Heroes SPF bottles. So, if you're in Central Indiana and you need some, contact us. Let us know. We'll get you some. If not, obviously there's ample supply at all the uh, the pharmacies and, and Targets and Costco's and you name it around. Uh, so stock up, get get some on yourself, on your kids. If you guys spend out time outside, um, prevention is, is key here. So we thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Summits Podcast. From wherever you're listening you know, or if you're watching on the Heroes Foundation YouTube channel, we appreciate you all. Thanks again and beat cancer. <laughs> <laughs>